This video is to show how to fit a retrofit bearing kit to an older oven with the older large style bearing. Today we will be using an octo housing removed from the oven in sections so that we can easily illustrate the simplest way to do this procedure. What we're looking at here is the older bearing setup with the larger 207 size bearing and the octo housing from the oven completely removed. The first part of the procedure when going to an oven and finding this kit is to remove the centre bolt, remove the grub screw from the side. That will expose these two holes here where you can use M6 jacking bolts in these holes to wind off the top half of the coupling. Wind these jacking bolts in and remove the coupling. The next part to remove will be the lower taper. Once again, use the same jacking bolts in any two of these two holes to remove the bottom taper. Remove the bottom taper by tightening the bolts. This will allow you now to undo the three M8 nuts. With the three M8 nuts removed, it is now possible to take the lower half of this bearing shell off. Note that some of the ovens do have roll pins through into locations. These will not be used in the latest model of the retrofit bearing kit, so they may be knocked up. You can now remove the bottom half of the bearing shell. With the bottom half of the bearing shell removed, the easiest way to remove these bearings is to poke a screwdriver in this gap here and give it a good wriggle. That will release the top taper that the bearing is seated on and allow the bearing to drop down. With the bearing assembly removed, you can now slide down the top taper and the top flinger plate. This is the top flinger plate and the top taper removed from the oven. We will notice that this is a straight flinger plate and doesn't offer any protection for the top bearing for water ingress. This is to be replaced with the mushroom style flinger plate that has a large edge around it that is larger than the bearing and shields it from water ingress. This is the first thing to go back onto the oven shaft. Apply a small amount of silicon around the top before placing in. Slide this up onto the shaft and use the tapered collar to retain this up in position. With ovens that have several of these finger plates fitted, only remove one and replace it with the mushroom style finger plate and place several or the required amount on the inside. Smear of silicon around and up into the oven. We will now look at fitting the retrofit bearing assembly. This one has been assembled from the factory in its correct order. The first part to go back into the oven is the adjustment nut. These have a machine shoulder on them. The machine shoulder goes down and references into the four millimeter thick bearing plate. So three of these go in first, shoulder down as shown. Wind them all the way to the top of the thread and back them out approximately one half of a turn for a baseline setting. Here we show the three adjustment nuts in position. Note, with some ovens there will be two roll pins on either side here 
and here. These are now redundant and no longer used. By simply using a hammer and a drift or a hammer and a socket extension, the pins may be driven up and be out of the road. A quick check before we put the bearing unit in. We check to make sure that the taper has been put in position. The mushroom flinger plate is in with the flange end facing down and that the taper is pushed up firm. Next to go in will be the bearing unit itself. It goes with the taper facing up directly onto the shaft. Make sure when the bearing goes in that the shoulder on the adjustable nut goes into the 4mm plate as we can see here. When the bearing is in place and we're sure that the shoulders of the adjustable nuts are seated correctly, we can now put a nut in position to keep the assembly together. At this point we have the bearing unit fitted and being held up by the three brass nuts. We will now go and check the fan runner height because this is the easiest time to adjust them. This is inside the roast runner oven with the firewall panel removed and the fan grills removed. What we're looking for is an even gap between the bottom of the fan runner and the top of the fan runner. One thing to note, there will always be a slightly larger gap under the bottom of the bottom fan runner. If the fan unit is too high inside the oven and the shaft has to be lowered, we loosen off these nuts and with a screwdriver behind, we can adjust these adjustable nuts down. As we wind these down, the whole fan shaft will move down with it. In most instances, the fan shaft does not need to go higher. However, sometimes it does. Here we see a good gap behind the back of the adjustment nut, and this is the normal position for it. However, variations in manufacturing do require a different adjustment. Should the fan shaft need to go higher, then having this nut wound all the way up and additional height is still required, a few more flinger plates added into the top underneath the mushroom plate will be required. If the fan shaft needs to go lower and we have already got the nut to the very bottom of the thread here, we've got this adjustable nut down so we've got a large gap here. The assembly has been tightened, check for height, and it still needs to go lower. The additional half nuts supplied with the kit can be placed behind the bearing shells here. They could also be adjusted further down and this nut further down to the end of the thread here for machines that are well out of calibration. With the fan runners correctly installed and at the correct height, now's the time we can fit the bottom coupling and turn the shaft. What we are listening for is any carbon or interference of the fan runners in their position. It is very important that it is double checked at this stage because to make any corrections after the next steps happen is very time consuming. The top half of the coupling has been put back on, the nut has been tightened, and the grub screw that goes through to the key steel has been tightened. These three nuts here have been tightened as we have achieved the correct fan runner clearance. And this is the most important step when replacing one of these bearings. Loosen off these three nuts approximately two turns or until you can feel movement in the bearing. Spin the oven shaft a few times and go around in one quarter turns and tighten back up these three nuts. 
It is acceptable to do this several times. What we wish to achieve is a self-centering process for the bearing so that the bearing is under no torsional load which will cause a premature and costly failure. As I've stressed, it is quite acceptable to do this three or four times to make sure we do not have any stress locked up inside this bearing. Loosen the bolts off, tighten them back up. This is the factory order of assembly for the lower bearing unit. Four millimeter bearing plate. Upper shell. The bearing unit itself with the grub screws removed. The grub screws are redundant in this assembly. A smear of never sees around the bearing surface. On each thread, three brass washers. These brass shim washers are 0.25 thick. The other half of the bearing shell. The reason for the brass washers in here is so that the bearing does not bind and allows a little bit of movement and helps the bearing seat when it's in the oven. Three M8 nuts. This completes the bearing unit from the factory.